Theranostics is a combination of therapeutics and diagnostics. Radiotheranostics is a term used to describe the combination of using one radioactive drug to diagnose and a second radioactive drug to deliver therapy to treat cancer. Several radiotheranostics are already available in clinical use. For example, Gallium-68 and the Lutetium-177 radionuclide pair labeled somatostatin receptor and the prostate-specific memory antigen ligands have been used for patient selection and the treatment of SSTR2 and the PSMA-positive cancer patients, respectively. Our team developed a proprietary platform technology to modify the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of agents used in radiolignin therapy. Specifically, we incorporate a serum albumin protein binding moiety, Evans blue dye, to prolong the bioavailability of various radiopharmaceuticals to enhance tumor uptake, to improve the treatment efficacy, and to reduce the amount of administered radioactivity. The Clinical Imaging Research Centre at the Yong Lulin School of Medicine at the University of Singapore is an academic imaging research centre that is fully earmarked for clinical imaging research. Our focus is on molecular imaging and theranostics and we serve as a national resource for um, imaging research in Singapore and uh, we aim to foster collaborations and to drive uh, the development and translation of these promising tools into clinical practice. So we have robust infrastructure at CIRC to perform radiotheranostic and molecular imaging studies. Firstly, we have a fully certified GMP psychotron and radiopharmaceutical lab. We have gallium generators, we have a non-GMP certified preclinical lab, and we have state-of-the-art hybrid PET scanners, a PET MRI, PET CT, as well as MRI, fully dedicated for imaging research. This study, which is a collaboration with MTTI, is to look at a new conjugate of lutetium-177 and is able to uh, bind to a receptor called SSTR2, which is expressed in nasopharyngeal cancer. So this drug is to test the efficacy of this uh, agent in a group of patients who have got refractory nasopharyngeal cancers that have failed all standard therapies and we hope to see a clinical response in these patients based on imaging. Translational studies are conducted in radio diagnostics in China, Germany and Singapore and many focus on using gallium labeled probes for PET imaging and beta and alpha emitter labeled ligands for radionuclide therapy. In particular, I conducted the first in human study to explore lutetium 177.abitite in neuroencrine tumor patients and found that this album of binding as a TR agonist remarkably enhanced the tumor uptake and retention, which is important to increase the therapeutic efficacy. It is safe and more effective than the current standard of care. With the development of many new strategies in the field of peptide receptor radionuclide therapy, in the future it will consist of the development of new indications, identification of new targets, the validation of combination therapy, and use of different radionuclides such as alpha emitters. In 2018, we learned of a new way to modify radio-label peptides to prolong their circulation half-life improving efficacy over current therapies. We were intrigued by the market potential and technology, license it, and are advancing to clinical stage in multiple indications. Significant clinical study demonstrates safety and efficacy of EB Tate. The FDA approved our IND in February 2021. Our US phase one trial is a dose escalation study to assess the safety and dosimetry in NETs following treatment of EB Tate. In addition, we're advancing clinical trials for other high SSTL2 tumors like laser and HER2 cell thyroid cancers. Here in the School of Medicine, we are always interested in things that can affect a clinical practice. And so whenever any of our researchers have an idea that we feel can move the needle, we are always very prepared to invest in them and support them. In the School of Medicine, we are fortunate in that we have a long history and because of that we've managed to build up significant resources which we can invest in good ideas with the hope of actually making a difference that matters. It is our expectation that 
some of our new formulas will be alternatives or replacements of the current radio diagnostics. Some radio ligands that are not originally suitable for cancer therapy may become possible due to the substantially improved treatment efficacy.